Welcome to Cactus Valley, as the first map of this second best of five of the evening. Spawning to the top left hand corner in Teal, we have our Zerg player from Maresk and Germany, it's Schnubi. And spawning to the bottom left hand corner in Purple, playing Protoss for her own team, <laughs> Horsemaster Pony. And the US, it's Horsemaster. Who's indeed riding horses, just in case you were wondering. Why she's called Horsemaster? That's because she rides horses. Why do they call them the Rabbi? Because he's a Rabbi. And if you know where that quote came from, you have my sincerest respect as a movie nerd. She'll be sending over Overlord, going for the standard hatchery first opening into Extractor into Pool. Let's see what Horsemaster wants to do. She's the new woman uh, in this match. One of the many who recently joined the FSL. So, Schnubi, experienced veteran of FSL Season 2. Let's see if this will grant her an advantage over her opponent or not. Horsemaster going into an early expand, right after the double gate. So, might actually apply some pressure with the Zealots here, but it seems it's only one Zealot in order to block the ram. Maybe another one later on, but of course she wants to save the first 150 minerals in order to get out the Summonetics core. Hatchery in the making. Shinobi has already realized where her opponent is. Is sending her other overlord accordingly across the map. Has this one positioned on the high ground, so she will get a better vision of the entrance. Unfortunately, it will probably not take uh, Horsemaster for all too long to find it with the help of the Mothership core and then maybe take it down with a Stalker. Or at least drive it away, if not take it down. Shnubi getting speed, but that does not really mean anything right now. Could actually try to bust through. I mean, she sees that there's no wall and no units whatsoever. So I think she should rather send a few units across the map in order to apply some pressure here. There's one Zealot now. Does the Overlord actually see it? No. But the Zergling will. So yeah, I mean, of course, with only a few Zerglings, there's not much you can do. But with a with a with an opening or with an entrance that wide open, not being sealed off whatsoever, no pylons here. I think I would just hit the Z button like crazy right now, <laughs> and just trying to flood links into this natural base. I mean, I mean, you you usually just cannot let your base be that open. There's not even a pylon down here. That's really, really risky to do that. I mean, Horsemaster only focusing on her tech back in her own main base is producing adept after adept. And yeah, at some point in time, we will hit. Uh, yeah, we will hit a point where the adepts alone will be able to deal even with a greater amount of links. But yeah, so far I think if Shnubi actually just had abandoned her plan and uh, went for a lot of mass links after seeing that there's no wall and no bottom whatsoever. I think she could have easily won that game in the first few minutes by just overwhelming her opponent, taking down the natural base. So, uh, Horsemaster going into Twilight Council and the Resonating Glaive obviously wants to play with mass adepts or at least a big amount of them and also getting a robotics facility behind it probably wants to play some sort of adept immortal push. Okay, moves in, sees that there are too many units so she just recalls home using the Mothership Core, so good for her that she had it with her. Could have been problematic if Shinobi had went uh, for... or if Shinobi had gone for a run by there, but she didn't. Going into Rotorn instead, so it seems as if she just wants to apply the first pressure using Roach Ravager. Or she just wants to have the Roaches anyways because of the many depths she saw. And uh, Hatchery going down third base. 
sending the Overlord over to the right hand side. Has a good vision of everything with the Overlord speed. She uh, got a good... did she get? Uh, she got a good vision of everything that was moving in. Knows that there's another gateway incoming, knows that there was a robotics facility. She knows exactly what her opponent wants to be up to and there she builds roaches with the new skin. So let's see. Oh, looking nice with the new skin pack. Banging nest incoming. So maybe she just wants to play a mix of Bailing Roach in order to crush through these forces. And still, I mean, Horus Master has one pylon and no wall to defend this. I mean, this is, uh, this is, this is like nuts. I mean, this is like super risky or super confident. I mean, wow, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel safe at all having no wall as Protoss. That's that's at least something I can tell you. But yeah, I mean, she's gathering forces. She might be able to overwhelm uh, a force um, once it hits her base. But Shinobi is just getting more and more units, building more and more roaches. Does not have the roach speed upgrade as far as I can see. Has Lair already finished? It has. Well, maybe she got it without me noticing. There she gets it. Okay, never mind. And getting a lot of banelings, like I said, baneling roach just wants to crush through all of these light units and the additional stalker. Yeah, this this force is really small. I mean, there's there's not much here. If this roach force, uh, together with the banelings, just comes across the map, it seems the Shnubi is more afraid of a bigger push, so she just wants to stay at home and defend while while well she doesn't really want to saturate this up. So I really think that she wants to go for an early push here. It does not feel as if she wants to saturate her third base at any point in time. Although, no, she does. <laughs> Proving me wrong. So maybe, like I said, maybe she was just thinking that her opponent would be super aggressive uh, after the first initial push. So she rather wants to stay back and defend uh, before... And, and make sure that she will have enough units to defend before she finally saturates that third base over here. So Horsemaster moving across the map has an Archon in the mix and an Immortal as well. And a little bit of gateway... A little bit of uh, a few gateway units here. So now moves across the room, moves, moves upwards the ramp. Uh, Shinobi already uh, brings a few of her units back, and crushes in with all of the lings and zerglings here. And now, getting reinforced by all of these roaches, will be able to take down the immortal as we speak. And Horse Master again just retreats using her mothership core, and not really dealing any damage whatsoever. Only the really cheap units got killed and the uh, got killed in the lings and the mains. But most of the roaches actually survive. Uh, while she herself actually lost a good chunk of her important units, but not without getting a third base here, so at least having that going for her. While Shnubi now will probably just go into a few drones in order to... No, she doesn't. Wants to go into Hydralisk then instead. Has probably seen that her opponent wants to go uh, for a gateway heavy style with the help of um, Archons and... The robo tech the immortals. So probably wants to go into Hydras for some um, wants to go into Hydras for some damage output and then later on into Lurkers, I guess. While taking a fourth right behind it. Nexus producing like crazy, Horsemaster will have her third base saturated in quite some time. While Snooby uh Snooby, sorry, while Snooby. <laughs> Her name actually is Snooby on the NA server. Uh, well, Snooby uh, finally takes her extractors on the third base in order to get more gas up because she will need it if she really wants to go for a uh, Hydra and then maybe later on Lurker transition. And I think Lurkers are a good choice here. Uh, Lurkers just uh, do amazing against gateway based armies with some immortals. So, Shinobi checking for a fourth base down here, unfortunately a little bit too early, but she cannot know that. And now just running into the third base, uh, will probably be able to get at least a few workers here before retreating. Uh, once the army arrives, getting four in the process. So, just good guaranteed damage there. Double Robo, actually, for Horsemaster, just producing Immortals like crazy. Yeah, I mean, of course, if you just get a certain amount of Immortals together, then of course even Lurkers 
can have problems dealing with those units because the Immortals just deal so much damage in such a short time that um, your Lurkers will just die in an instant and uh, then you might just be able to tear them down. So Shinobi has to be careful when to engage the army and with what units. So more maimings get morphed. Not a lot of gas actually put and invested into these units. Um, the uh, the Hydra Speed and Range Upgrade. Also getting the Missile Attack number two. No upgrades for Horse Master whatsoever. Horse Master just moving from right to left and left to right. Actually, whoa! Expanding towards her opponent. Has probably realized that she won't be able to expand down here. Or just doesn't want to do it anymore. Maybe just feels comfortable in moving towards her opponent with the larger force that she has right now. And this actually is growing stronger and stronger and quite scary, actually. I mean, it is also a big force for Shnubi, yeah? She has good upgrades. Well, not, not right now, but in just a few seconds. Maybe before the engagement happens? Just barely. Okay, barely before the engagement happens. Attacks and in right now. Just moves everything forwards. Garosa parts go down, but uh, Horse Master retreats in time. There's a good concave there for Shnubi. And a lot of damage output, unfortunately, for Horse Master. Most of these immortals not actually firing, trying to stutter step back into the expansion. The Mothership Core is not in place, so no Photonova charge available. Now the Archons finally get in front, trying to suck up some damage while the immortals shoot from behind. A stutter stepping, not quite the best she could have gotten out of it tries to deal as much damage as possible and while retreating actually doing a good job of tearing them down and there you can finally see the power of the immortals especially against, against such a small chunk of army right now and Shnubi has to retreat while well, horse master is actually chasing I don't know if that is a wise idea I mean uh, the further she goes out, the better the defender's advantage for Shnubi gets. And Shnubi is sitting on three fully saturated bases with one incoming. So yeah, I think that was just the overstepping that Horse Master did there. I mean, she already was behind in supply. Uh, finally getting the Mothership Core in here has a pylon ready, but this is a really huge-ass army right now against the army that Horse Master has. Trying to desperately get up a few Archons here. Has another pylon and not another photo overcharge available so uh, once Shnubi decides to attack she will easily be able to take out that pylon and then might even get the base since horse master just cannot afford to attack this army if she does though she will actually lose all of her army yeah, and Shnubi just realized no 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 I won't follow you in here I will just confidently take out your base and if need be just retreat afterwards because I know that you're now down on three bases while I'm comfortably sitting on my four can tech up higher nothing built right now by horse master if there gets the first probe being built but yeah of course she's now kind of desperate and in a very awkward spot here having lost her fourth base the uh, the third base is slowly mining out the natural base is pretty dry main base is almost dry so really not that much that she can do snooby now investing into an infestation pit wants to transition into a hive behind this but look at that huge army 108 to 52 army supply it's i mean this this is almost unholdable if she manages to buy enough time for storm it could make a difference. I mean, there's a lot of Hydras and Light units with only a few HP in the mix. So with some High Templars with Storm, but I think she just won't be able to hold out for that long. Okay, Lurker just gets killed in an instant, no problem there. The question is, will the rest of the army be enough? The Archon unfortunately stuck right behind the Immortals. That really remembers me of the old Wings of Liberty days when Immortals still had a range of five and were always walking around behind the Stalkers doing actually nothing, which resulted in the buff when Immortals finally got a six range as well. But yeah, Shnubi just pressuring through. Horus Master realizes this is it, and Shnubi takes the lead with a 1-0. Oh. Proxima Station is our second map in this best of five, spawning to the bottom left. In Teal, we have our Zerg player Shnubi. And to the top right in purple, it's our Protoss player Horus Master. Funny thing is that while Horsemaster is of course riding, <laughs> due to her name, uh, Shnubi, I think, is also 
an avid horse rider, horseback rider, herself. Once she's got time for it. So, these two actually having something in common already. So, Horsemaster walling off <laughs> this time. Quite easy to do, though, because we have... Uh, I mean, actually, she... she Never mind. She also walled off in the first game on her main ramp, but uh, and it never actually mattered that she never walled off her natural base. So, but this time, of course, uh, walling off is way easier to do since uh, oh, gets a gateway and a forge, a forge. That is actually quite interesting. There it does not have a worker out on the map, so there's no way to cannon rush. Actually, quite interesting there that Shinobi wants to take the expand uh, towards her opponent. Uh, probably just wants to help herself with a creep spread towards her opponent, but still it's the uh, a bit more difficult to defend natural base. Okay, there is... okay, never, never, never mind, there is a worker. So it seems as if she just wanted to sneak back into this corner and maybe cannon rush from there. Uh, looks like that was the plan. It was just so far in the in the corner that I didn't really see it. But I was wondering why you would do that. So yeah, a little bit unfortunate maybe for her. It seems as if she really wanted to sneak her probe into this little corner, planting down a pylon, and then just cannon rushing from here. But it didn't succeed. Snooby sniffed it out and uh, found the probe. Now is already, woo, is already sending workers towards that third base here, towards that third base location with a natural planted. So getting early upgrades instead, well, that's actually an idea I like a lot. Maybe it was the plan right from the get-go, but I think after having a failed cannon rush, or maybe it wasn't, I don't, I can't really tell. I mean, it looked like a cannon rush uh, right from that corner, but maybe she really wanted to have plus one and wants to do a timing push with plus one involved, can also be. Or maybe she now just reacts because she saw, okay, Cam Rush didn't work, so might as well make best use of that forge and get an upgrade. While maybe expanded behind it? Yes, there's the probe already in position. It's pretty difficult to see all that purple in, in the dark corners of the map. So, Shinobi sending an overlord across the map wants to get a good vision of the main base in order to see which tack her opponent wants to transition into. And in the meantime, just good old droning up. Horsemaster also doesn't want to be that aggressive. Can't really be that aggressive that early on since she delayed her own tech because of the forge. Getting another gateway behind it. Just planting down all the infrastructure while waiting for her nexus to come up. I think it's always a wise idea to get a pylon down here. A lot of people actually tend to forget that there's a back, there back dock or back... Uh, a lot of people tend to forget that there are backdoor rocks that can be taken down. And uh, actually, actually, both both players, the defender and the attacker, very often forget that there is a path around where you can just... Well, actually, actually far around, but there is a path around where you can actually attack from behind without the other person knowing if they don't plant down a building here. No one has yet taken advantage of that possibility i think no one's i think no one's ever really broken through this debris here so should we slowly moving in is she going for overload speed once more i think she is not not right now uh just having a spore crawler just in case an oracle would make its way across the map but there isn't spore crawler although not one in the main base so if an oracle were to fly in the Queen alone would not be able to stop it from killing a lot of drones before moving out. So Overlord getting inside, slowly but steadily. While Horsemaster is just saturating her natural base. Baning Nest incoming, probably just a safety Baning Nest. I don't really think that Shinobi... Uh, well, maybe, maybe again, I think yeah, maybe Shinobi just wants to do the same thing. Uh, going for a Roach-based composition with a few Banelings inside. Uh, doesn't really know anything yet about the Your tech army has encountered the enemy. that her opponent has. And we heard that Shinobi actually has the Total Biscuit announcer enabled. So Horsemaster using her shades in order to get some scouting information. Does she let it finish? Yes, she does. And might even be able to take out like one drone or two. Is not focus firing though. Well, standing in a good position there. The, the adept is, but it will never get out again once more. Unfortunately, just too many links around. But of course, Horsemaster actually gathered a lot of information here. They are both kind of equal right now. 
and uh, the information Horsemaster get is actually a tremendous amount here. Just uh, got the information of the mailing list, got the information of the lot of Zerglings there, so might actually want to do something with it. And uh, finally the overload speed of Shinobi kicks in. So now she will be able to scout a little bit more properly. Sees the Twilight Council, sees that it's researching something. And having seen the first few Adepts, she might assume that it's going to be Resonating Glaives. Uh, might want to go in a little bit again, maybe even sacrificing that Overlord just to see the army composition. Because that's what I really want to do when I see a Twilight Council researching something. I really want to check what my opponent has as units. And the worst case is if he or she, if they actually have Adepts and Stalkers at an equal amount. And then you just sit there and think, oh great, what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Blink? Is it gonna be... Is it gonna be... Resonating Glaives? And then he probably just built Charge. <laughs> no. So, yeah, normally you just want to check the army composition of your opponents so that you will get a good idea of what is probably coming. But yeah, there you see it, right? I mean, it was a lot of Adepts. Uh, before the first few stalkers got warped in. But yeah, usually, I mean, it's not a perfect tell. If you see the army composition, you can always assume what your opponent is doing. It's still not a perfect tell. But usually, uh, if you have the time to do it, and if you don't go for an early attack, but rather for a timing attack, you want to make the most out of your resources. And uh, so it's rather unusual to just build a lot of units you don't actually want to upgrade. You only want to build them if you feel it's needed in order to fend off a certain type of push. But uh, unless you really want to do that, you really want to go for a counter push, uh, you really want to go for a timing push, never mind, then uh, you of course want to only build units you're actually going to upgrade to just make the most out of your resources and to make the uh, push as impactful as possible. So. Again, not a guaranteed tell, but, but kind of helping to get an idea of what your opponent is up to. So, more the um, army moves across the map. We have a warp prism, actually with even one more unit in place. Horsemaster will be able to, reinforcement, uh, to reinforce her, um, her push, but there's a lot of units here. Shnubi, uh, being the careful player she is, has already built a huge-ass army on, well, two and a half bases mostly with only 43 workers. So let's see, yeah, she should just easily be able to kill that horse master, should just recall in an instant, but she does not! Ugh, most of the units die, I don't know what she's waiting for, a recall would have just been the best thing to do. Maybe was expecting that to do way more damage than it actually did, but that was a really, really slow um, recall there, losing almost more than half of the army there. And Shnubi now with a big army advantage, just pressuring her advantage, uh, pressing her advantage right now. Just moving towards the third base, there's only one pylon here and a few immortals and one stalker plus a mothership core full of energy, but only, only one pylon. I mean, ugh, this could really be pretty problematic to hor for Horsemaster to hold. I actually don't think she can. I mean, she's now waiting for the Disruptor. The Disruptor might actually help a little bit. Well, uh, Shnubi being a bit too respectful. Uh, of that pylon here. At least one Colossus is out. This Colossus will help a little bit from behind. Has to be careful not to move it too far in front so that the units might be able to take it out. But yeah, I think Shnubi could just 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 move in and try to kill off everything. M uh, I mean, I still understand if she's hesitant. You, you don't really want to give away your advantage too easily. And it's always quite difficult to figure out if you can actually take that Pro's Force or not. And if you then just barely do not take it, or if you take it but only a few units remain and you have to um, push back anyways. Nah, it's it's kind of meh situation there. But now with the Disruptor out, I th uh, well, with good micro, I think Horsemaster should be able to defend this okay-ish. Not out on the map. But with the help of her photon overcharge, uh, she should be. Okay, disruptor moving out, sending in. Ooh, not getting the disruptor shot. That was like a critical thing. Even even putting the uh, the Colossus right in front of her army so that it can easily get picked off by Shnubi's forces there. Ugh, that was really unfortunate. 
just losing the two most important damage dealers in her army. Well, maybe not the two most important. The Disruptor was very important. The Immortals, though, maybe a little bit more important even than the Colossus. Uh, because a single Colossus does not really deal that much damage. But yeah, losing the Disruptor, of course, was something that Horse Master absolutely wanted to avoid. So let's see, there we have the first Corrosive Bile going down, Shnubi once more just being very careful here, does not want to move in too far, does not want to lose most of her army, is just producing more and more units, well there's only one Void right now, Horsemaster really building every unit that there is in the in the um, Protoss arsenal there, and I'm, I mean with more Void Rays incoming, this could actually still work out as a whole there. Once she gets up to like four to five Void Rays, Void Rays kill Roaches and Ravagers so quickly and it's very difficult to catch them with only Ravagers. I mean, theoretically it's possible, but the Biles just fall down so slowly that it should actually be never possible for them to hit the Void Rays if the opponent is paying attention and micros them properly. So, more upgrades in production for Shnubi. I don't really like that move by Horsemaster at all, trying to move out at that point. I mean, the best thing that was going for her was her own in-base defenses, and that she had the possibility to Photon Overcharge that, maybe even luring her opponent into, um, into a choke point, but now she's just lost all of her units. Shnubi is moving in, killing off the only remaining pining pylon inside the natural base. At least two more Void Rays coming in with Photon, uh, with Photon Overcharge, with the prismatic alignment, yeah, but it's just not enough. GG, and Shnubi takes the 2-0 lead. Abyssal Reef is our third map. Spawning to the top left-hand corner in Teal, we have Myrisk Shnubi. And to the bottom right, we have our Protoss Horsemaster. Playing for our own clan, Horsemaster Pony. Ah, ah, the cardboard zergling in chat. Oh my god, is that cute! Damn! <laughs> I, I couldn't even play normally if someone posted that to me in chat. Oh! This is so friggin' cute. Horsemaster going for the Wolof. Shinobi going for the hatch first. Everything played out like usual. Okay, Horsemaster, I like this scout a lot, going for the early scout right after the right after the pylon or right after the gateway, but going for the immediate scout. Wants to see if her opponent is indeed going for an early pool or not. No! Wants to go for some sort of proxy shenanigans here, it seems. Or not? Okay, or maybe not. That, that was a bit strange movement there. Okay, Horsemaster moves in, sees that there's... Uh, well, actually, she's already seen the hatchery here, I think. And uh, now sees that the extractor is being built and the spawning pool right afterwards, so nothing she needs to be worried about. But yeah, I think she would have actually, th this time around, she actually would have managed to sneak that probe in without getting seen. So maybe an attempted cannon rush would have worked out better. Yeah, this time around we have the Simonetics core right behind it. So like I said, I don't think the plus one upgrade was the original intention. Is that actually open on both sides? I think there's an entrance here. And there's an entrance over here, so I think this wall off is not complete whatsoever. Next is going down. So let's see. Yeah, this probe is moving through here, and I think there's still an open... Is there an open... Yeah, there is an open gap. So unfortunately for Horsemaster, this is open on two sides. Cybernetics core being built. Or just finishing as we speak. Two queens being produced by Shnubi, first for links, for scouting purposes, and maybe to put some aggression. Okay, Air Horsemaster realizes it, that she needs another pylon in order to close this off. Overlords, good in position, so even if something wants to get into uh, well, if someone wants to get out of Horsemaster's base, uh, directed towards Shnubi's base, she will realize it immediately, sends in the scouting link, sees that the Nexus is almost done. Or building, at least. So wants to get in, but there's two zealots just chopping away on that poor zergling that floats towards the 
that floats towards the surface there. <laughs> that was really mean. Uh, did she actually see? I think she saw it. Did she get the Stargate? Ah, I don't know if she clicked on it. She saw that two buildings were uh, the two buildings were whooping in, but don't know if she actually clicked on that in order to see that it was a Stargate. Uh, no immediate reaction, so I think she didn't click on it. Was probably assuming that it would be more gateways. So one void ray already being constructed. Seems the Forest Master wants to go for some sort of void ray timing. Maybe just send across a few void rays in an attempt to maybe kill off a hatch or just uh, kill off a few drones. I think if you really want to go for drones, the Oracle would actually be the better choice, or even Phoenixes. With enough Phoenixes, you could always just lift uh, the drones and kill them. But Void Ray is usually not the best uh, to kill drones, but uh, of course, better in killing buildings. Ooh, getting the fleet beacon right behind it. So maybe this is going to be a two-base carrier rush. Miyako would be so proud. No, actually she wouldn't, because Miyako will only build carriers and motherships on one base. If you want to be a total baller, you of course have to build a mothership core, um, a mothership and a few carriers on one base. Only then you're the boss. So, Overlord's moving out, uh, good map vision there for Shinobi, maybe a little bit off with the creep here, but uh, the Overlord's in good position. Another Overlord, Speed Overlord, moving in. Uh, will get a good scout, probably. So let's see what she will see and how she will react to it. So Overlord moving in, let's see. What will she see? She sees the Void Ray, she sees the um, Fleet Beacon and the Stargate. So she has all the information she needs. Let's see how she's going to react. Bailey Nest was already building before the scouting info. Lair is morphing. So yeah, she probably will just wait for the Lair to finish and then will probably go into Hydras, I guess, or Aspire. She could have fought both. In the meantime, I think she should just build more drones since she can't really do anything at all. Oh, getting getting to Evolution Chambers. That's interesting. And getting more Roaches. So maybe she wants to pressure before the amount of carriers actually gets too big. So, Horsemaster, just sitting on a two Void Rays, not really using them for anything, but of course, and that's something we can say, if she got attacked by Shinobi with only Roaches, I think, I think that's, I mean, that's actually not that bad of an idea. If you just think that you want to carry a rush on two bases, you have to be afraid of early pushes with Roaches that will just kill you on the ground because you will not have enough money to afford both carriers and a lot of ground forces. So uh, the usual push that will come will either be a lot of links or be a lot of Roaches. And this sort of army actually deals with both of them. The Void Race would help out tremendously against like 7 to 8 to 10 Roaches while the rest of the army just keeps them back. And the Adepts, of course, would also help against the Zergling. So, like I said, that's actually not that bad of an idea to get an army composition like that if you just want to sit back and tech into carriers. So, finally the carrier is out, and with the first carrier she moves across the map. I don't really know if that Overlord had the chance to see the carrier before it got shot down. Uh, Horsemaster has to be careful here, has to wait for her important carrier because it's an important damage dealer as well. Not much that Shubi actually can do against the carrier there. I mean, uh, Horsemaster just wants to take out these rocks so that the ramp will be more wide open, but unfortunately is not paying attention and almost all of her ground forces get taken out before the actual push begins here. So, but like I said, I mean, there's not much she can actually do against the carrier and the void race. She doesn't have that much anti-air. Queen gets shot down by the void race, and now the carrier and the void race are reigning supreme. There's, like I said, not really much she can do right here. She doesn't have a spire, I think. She only has a spore crawler building is now just moving across the map, going for a counter-attack, and that's just the best thing she can do. I mean, all of these units are useless at home, so you might as well just make the best use of it. And actually, whoa, that's actually a little bit lucky there for Shinobi, I think. Well, Horsemaster has to make a decision. Does she want to defend at home against the army that, it has, gotten, uh, that has gotten sent across the map towards her base? Or does she want to keep uh, pressuring into the base of her opponent? I think she could have pressured a little bit more and then recall 
but this way she just gets back at least six seven worker kills there for Schnubi. so that's of course a big damage to horse master's economy who has in the meantime taken a third base so not that big of an impact at all and if you just have a look both still at kind of the same worker supply both having three bases but only two of them being saturated a little bit better saturation now for Snoopy since she managed to kill a lot of these workers over here at the natural base but they're again replenished as we speak and um yeah, the, the push is just continuing, but finally we have a lot of hydras out. Yeah, this this actually was the time that Shnubi needed in order to get the anti-air out that she needed to take out these forces. It's just focusing down all of the air units, which is the good thing to do, the good call, because the air units are the only thing that are really causing her headaches. Might even getting the Mothership Core, no, does not, retreats in time. Uh, still, Horsemaster managed to actually keep up with her Zerg opponent here, has gotten a third base, is now trying to saturate it. No saturation whatsoever at Shinobi's third base, though. Uh, instead, pressuring the Ling button and trying to get a few more standing forces out. One more Void Race incoming for Horsemaster. Yeah, just, just doesn't have the economy in order to keep on producing uh, carriers, so she just wants to make the best out of the Stargate and keeps producing Void Race. Upgrade for speed and range for the Hydralisks will make these Hydralisks even more potent. And that actually is the problem right now. I mean, yes, of course you want to make use of a building you've once built, but air units could be okay if it weren't Void Rays, because Void Rays are just crap against Hydras. Just, just total and utter crap. So Void Race is actually is absolutely not what you want to have. Ooh, unfortunately this base is totally unprepared for a Zirkling attack. And Shnubi actually taking out almost all of the mining workers there before Horsemaster actually even has the chance to react sense over her army, which is actually pretty mobile because it's mostly an air force. But uh, still, I mean, losing all of these workers over here, again, a big blow for Horsemaster's economy. And without the right economy, she just cannot continue producing uh, out of the Stargate going into uh, Karyas. Instead, she just wants to deal with the, um, with the amount of Hydras that's probably going to come using Templars and Storms. But in the meantime, Shinobi is already transitioning into Lurkers, which is actually kind of interesting. I mean, it's not a bad transition in any case, but right now I think Snoopy sh must still assume that her opponent is going into Mars Air. And Lurkers, well, well, I said, like I said, it's not that bad. Having a few Lurkers in your army can always prove very useful because the Lurkers will then help dealing with the ground force that's inevitable also coming with the air forces, while your other units may then take care of the flying units. So it's still a good idea to have a powerful ground force that can just wipe out the opponent's gripe force in a few seconds, and uh, then you can just attend to the rest of the air forces. So, Psionic Storm in the making, more carriers, and also Colossus! Horsemaster really going into that heavy tech on like two and a half bases. Well, actually managed to resaturate that base fairly quickly. So, army moving is coming in, the music is tensifying. Breaking through the rocks. Army is a little bit out of position, no idea that this is coming, actually no map vision whatsoever for Horsemaster. Horsemaster just barely uh, seeing the edges of her own base. Ah, oh, this pesky Ling from uh, way back when <laughs> just managed to drive away a few of these probes. And there the army is coming. Maybe that was not the best timing, actually, because Horsemaster just moved all of her army towards here. Luckily for Shnubi, Horsemaster just moved back to uh, in front of the, the natural base there. Actually, not the best way to position your army at that point in time. But, yeah, luckily for her, she actually got the chance to move in here. Focus firing down all of the air units with the Hydras here. Having enough damage output to just take out a few of these Void Rays and a few on the ground. But like I said, this is the big problem right here. If you don't have anything on the ground, like the Lurkers she was trying to build, you have problems dealing with the Air Force that's protecting 
the Sky Force. But now more and more Hydras running in. All of the units get shot down. Actually, Shnubi doesn't even need to take down the carriers as it is. She just can shoot down all of the interceptors. More and more units reinforcing the insane damage output of the Hydras. Taking down all of these standing ground forces of Horsemaster here. More and more units incoming. Finally, the carrier manages to get a few more interceptors out. But now it's on its own together with the Colossus. All of the forces get taken down bit by bit by Schnubi here. She still has some roaches left. Rally some roaches right behind it. And this might actually be it, ladies and gentlemen. 122 to 79 supply. Economy is looking kind of okay for Horsemaster, but will not continue to do so once this base falls and there are no standing forces to take down this army whatsoever the void ray might help a little bit later though I mean yeah the void ray, there's not anything here that can really attack the void ray except for this hydralisk here but it will get shredded in just a matter of seconds there more hydras being produced but Shinobi actually does not even need to further extend into horse master's base she has already comfort comfortably taken a fourth base can just easily retreat once she sees what army moves are there or she just decides to attack in since she knows she's only pressuring her advantage by destroying more and more units that horse master still has to replenish somehow wasting more or less resources into an immediate defense rather than into a an, an force that would also work out later on in the game nice little micro there by Shnubi sniping down that immortal and now it's only a few void rays and a few more Hydras still remain. Oh, I don't know. No Mothership Core whatsoever. Mothership Core would be so great now with all of these pylons around. But it doesn't matter. GG! And Shnubi takes the series 3-0.